All right, uh, Jim Tomey is uh, working for the Major League Baseball Network. Coverage from Fenway begins today at 3 and will feature MLB Tonight airing before and after every game. They do a great job, and it's good to have the Hall of Famer back on the program. Jim, good morning. How are you? Oh, it's great. How's everything? It's been a long time, my friend. Everything going great? Yeah, we're just trying to figure this out with the analytics that when, you know, that you have Chris Sale on the mound, the Dodgers go all right-handed. So I got three guys who hit at least 25 home runs, and I got the analytics saying I can't put them up there against Chris Sale. What do you make of this? Well, look, I think the analytics have been a big part of where I think we've become, where we're heading forward, and it's it's about numbers. By the way, I would send Gibby up there, just so you know. Okay. I would have sent Gibby. I would have sent Gibby up with, as they did, as Tony, as you know, as Tommy Lasorda did at the time. But, you know, the the analytics are interesting because, you know, I also work with the White Sox and. And there's a lot of information being put out there. And I think I, I do believe that, that some of it is good. And I do believe that you have to go off of wisdom too, time and history and just being around the game. And as you said a minute, I was listening in the gut feeling. I think what made all of those managers great is that they had those gut feelings. They had, you know, they maybe said, okay, Kirk Gibson can hit that backdoor slider, even though he is hurt. You know, Eckersley didn't throw hard, but maybe at that moment he could have done that. You know, granted he was hurt, but he could still get to that wraparound slider that Eckersley threw, and he did, which, you know, that that's why I respect the guys that do have the gut feeling, but all those analytical guys that bring the information down and they put it in front of you, I think there is value to that as well. But would you be sitting out last night's game in your prime if you're facing Clayton Kershaw or Chris Sale because it's lefty on lefty? No. No, I would not. I would not. I I, I, I hope not. Well, you may not have a choice in it. Your manager might go, look, looked at the analytics, Jim. Sorry, you're not going to face Chris Sale. Well, that would have been a bummer. I'd be honest. And Chris Sale, look, look, Chris Sale is a dominant dominant left-hander and there were there were those guys in our time Dan that, that like you know the Randy Johnsons you know when Randy was dominant those were times that Espinoza would get that start but overall but that's when you wanted to sit F- down Jim when Randy Johnson was on the mound you were okay <laughs> if your manager said hey I was well <laughs> not my mentality though I'll be honest because there's always that one chance that you could come up with a big hit and you know, that, that's, that's where our game's headed. I really believe it. I think, you know, as you've seen with bullpens, I think we've seen it with, you know, with, with platoons. And, and you look across the Dodgers, you know, whole staff lineup, they've, they've got guys, they got guys that are sitting that are all-stars. I know. And, Crazy. you know, to their, to their credit, that's gotten them there. I just, I like the old traditional way. I think you know that. But, Jim, I'm looking at this. The last five complete games in the World Series, I think we've only had five this this decade. In the last decade. Uh, I think we've had, no, even I, in the last, since the 2001 World Series, we've had five complete games in the World Series. Who, who were those guys? Do you know? Johnny Cueto. Madison Bumgarner, Cliff Lee, Josh Beckett, and Randy Johnson. Yeah, I mean, all all dominant. I'll be honest, and I, you know, like listening to Smoltzy, I think Smoltzy, you know, because cause Smoltzy says a lot of great things. And, uh, you know, that, that era, that time during our 90s, it, it's just changed so much. And, and I ask the question, is it because – there are more guys now that throw harder and you can keep bringing them out of the bullpen. Yeah. But, but you know, it's to me, it's, I hope that we continue to see, you know, what the stat, like the five complete games, you know, I, gosh, I mean, the old traditional starter that could go eight, you just don't see it no more. And you don't see it in postseason because of the firepower that these bullpens have that they can go to. Now, the risk to that 
is when you overuse them. And I, and I know this as a hitter. If you keep running a guy out there and I, we get used to them and we see their tendencies, a guy can still throw 100 and get hit. So that's the fine line of bringing too many guys in. We're in a seven-game series where guys, you know, our lineups get, you know, they get used to these guys coming out of the pen. Alex Cora made all the right moves last night. And, you know, you make that switch, you bring in Nunez. Uh, you know, Baez was throwing some cheese up there, Jim. And then you bring in Alex Wood, yeah. and then, you know, it's a three-run homer. That's where it's a gut feeling. And, look, Dave Roberts has done a great job. But in that moment, it just felt like, man, this guy's, you know, he's, he's, he's bringing it. And, I, no, I got to play, I gotta yeah. play the, the analytics here. And not that they lost because of that, but it just sort of, you know, that the spotlight shined on that because you sit all of your left-handers, you want those matchups, and it didn't work out last night. No, it didn't. It didn't. And that's the fun part. It might tonight, you know, and that's look, I mean, I think I, on the, on the, on the game last night, it said managers are getting more scrutinized than ever. And, and it's because of all the moves that are being made. I, I, I mean, Cora has done a fabulous job. I'll be honest. He's kept, he's kept the game traditional, you know, he's hitting and running. He's, you know, he didn't steal a guy at first base, left the hole open you know, there's just little things that I really think he's done a fine job. And, you know, as you well know, Dan, it's all about matchups. And, you know, but but are we overthinking the game a little bit? You know, that's that's the question I think everybody asks in the postseason now, and especially the last two or three. You still- you know, I, I think it started. I think it started when Andrew Miller with Cleveland, you know, a few years back. You know, when Tito was going to Andrew in like the fifth and the sixth, that's that's when I really started seeing like the total change of the bullpens completely taking over the postseason. He's Jim Tomey, the Hall of Famer, working for the Major League Baseball Network as an analyst. I got you one for nine, six strikeouts, one home run against Randy Johnson. Well, I got the one homer, but you know what? I didn't fare well, nor should I have <laughs> with as good as he was. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're hey, at least I got the one, but I got the one later on, you know, in his career and I was in Philly, so I'll take it. No doubt about okay, it. Okay. What is it like when you go, when you dig into the batter's box and Randy Johnson's on the mound and he's never in a good mood. So what are you thinking when you go to the plate? Well, I'm thinking as I, now, as I got established for me, I was thinking, Okay, like hang in there. Okay, because he's he's tall, he's six eight, six whatever he, his height is. His arm span like basically throws to the plate. It's coming out at you. And for me, it's you know get mentally focused. <laughs> try to try to hit a pitch and don't miss it. And if you miss it, it's not going to be a fun at bat. Look, look, Randy. Randy was if not the most dominant left hander of all time. You know, he was definitely in our time in the 90s through the early, I don't know when Randy retired, but he is, he was incredible. I, he was a tough matchup, you know, but, but my mentality was always, I'm still going to compete against you and I'm still going to walk to that to home plate and think I can get you no matter as you read the numbers, which he dominated me, but I'll still think it no doubt. What's it like at the plate at Fenway? When you see that green monster, it, it, it's it's, gosh, I can I can see it right now after all them years. You look up, the green just you see it. You, it's just tradition. I don't know. You know, for me, it did you adjust though to like it? The, it? I always felt like it when you come out of the runway up in the dugout, and the first thing yeah. you see is the green monster. It just feels like it's a wiffle ball field, like. Man, I I can yeah. I can hit one off the wall there. It looks so close. Did, did you adjust accordingly to Fenway to try to use yeah. the wall? You know what? I was just gonna say it got me, typically Fenway got me locked back in to going the other way because you could get beat a little bit and and, and hit a ball the other way and it hit the wall or go over it. But it always it always helped me get locked back in wherever I left from there. But it. 
seeing the green monster, like it just was tradition, man. That's baseball. That's that's as good as it gets. Uh, who who wins tonight? What's it come down to tonight with this pitching matchup? Who I I've got to be honest. I mean, I like Price. I really do. I think mm. him pitching the way he did last game. I think. You know, he made a few adjustments. I think they pointed that out on the network, you know, where he's standing on the rubber. and But 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 mainly, I think he's healthy. I like Boston again, to be honest. I, I They got a really good club, man. They, they do a lot of things right, and they got a lot of firepower. And I really like how Cora has, has gotten all them guys in a flow of, of the game. The one pitcher that comes to mind, if I say, man, I own that guy, who comes to mind? Oh, my God. I felt, I don't, <clears throat> okay, I don't use the word own, but I felt good on Justin Verlander. Really? Yes, believe it or not, I felt great on Verlander. Not many people Clement, have. I felt, I felt great on Clemens. I would say the one guy, and again, I don't try to use the word own, but Rick Reed back in the day was a guy that I had a ton of success. Well, those, I can understand that. I can understand that, but you said Verlander and Clemens. Yeah. Yeah, I felt, I felt good on him. I, I really did. You have seven I'm, home runs off Verlander. Yes. I don't know how many you hit off Clem. Uh, how many, do Paulie? Do we have uh, Jim's numbers off Clemens? Maybe seven Ten, or eight. Seven or eight off Clemens. I think, yeah. I'm, 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 if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. I got, uh, and What's even, it, yeah. Well, you hit six hundred home runs. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you had to take somebody deep a few times here. <laughs> Let me see. Paulie, do we have Clemens? We're checking. We got eight people working on this right now. Oh, okay. I yeah. love it. Yes, yeah, Eden. It looks like he's got eight. Eight against Clemens? Eight. That's yeah. what I thought. That's Seven what against I thought. We, all, we, we always know right around. <laughs> <the numbers. laughs> if, if, oh. if Clemens was listening now, he'd probably want to buzz the tower on you for uh, calling him out like this. That's okay. I'd have got right back in there. Ah, that's that's you, big country boy. You just get right back up there and you take your cut. You rub some dirt on it, Jim, and you're okay. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Unless it hits you in the in the head. <laughs> did anybody throw at you? Like, did you ever feel like you know what? That's a purpose. Pitch? No. no, no one. I don't really. I mean, look, look. I was on the plate. I was all. I was all over the plate. I wanted to create my strike zone. I I wanted to leave everything out of the equation of an umpire calling the ball away. Charlie Manuel and I, when, when, when I turned, when everything started turning for me for the right direction, I think getting on the plate was the best thing I ever did. And, and I felt like I controlled the strike zone. Now, I struck out a bunch, but I still felt that if, if they made a mistake, I was going to have the plate coverage to cover the area. Yeah, and I uh, I got Sabathia smoking you once. Cece did, I remember, yeah. But, but okay, who's the yeah. guy you're not going out and you, that you would give pause to go out to the mound? No one. Because you I would. Mean, if, if, look, look, if, it, if it's called for and you get smoked or, you know, like the way the game plays out and you get hit, yeah. like you go to the. I mean, that's just baseball. That's. That's how you're supposed. That's how you earn respect, you know, for you from your teammates. You know, if you get hit, I mean, sh I don't think you're every time looking to charge them out, but you can get a feel during the game if a guy's purposely like throwing behind you, and then, you know, like like it's got to end. You know, ultimately, you know that's why retaliation. You don't you don't see. I I feel you don't see. You're not seeing a lot of retaliation, but I do I do believe guys will throw at guys, you know, today. They will do that for sure. Uh, I hope you're having fun with MLB Network. Uh, good to have you on, Jim, and uh, congrats Thanks, for uh, all the success. Appreciate it. Good talking to you again, and uh, you as well. Thank you, bud. That's uh, Jim Tomey, Hall of Famer, working for uh, MLB.
For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.